morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Barnesville Baptist Church. Beautiful sunny day. If you haven't figured it out, I'm not Pastor Danny for the first time probably ever since we've done our live stream. He's actually away, joined time with family and, and friends at a wedding. So we hopefully he'll watch and we wish him well. And we're just thankful to have our former pastor, Pastor Randy Gillum, and his wife Sandy here with us. Uh, Randy and Sandy served here for 14 years. Uh, I believe it's been five years now since you uh, retired five years ago this month. And it seems like a long time, and we've been blessed, obviously, with Pastor Danny and Cindy immediately after that. And, uh, of course, Danny and Randy go way back to seminary, and uh, so we've been thankful for that. And we're glad you guys are here, came over from Delaware to uh, to be with us and, and to bring bring God's word. And you know, we enjoy hearing from Randy. And so, um Couple, Danny wanted a couple of things, um, announcements. Basically, um, June Loon is in rehab at Asbury, and if you want to send her a card, just send it to her house, the home address you have in your um, directory, and then family will make sure she gets the card. Um, I don't know of any other announcements. How's Dan doing? Dan came home yesterday. So, doing real good. Great. Dan Yates came home yesterday, and he's doing really good, and and we're thankful, and as far as I know, we're still coronavirus-free uh, with all the people, so uh, we're thankful for that, too. Um, so we are just glad that everybody's here in here, and everybody's here online. We welcome you, um, and thank you guys for worshiping with us. And we're going to go ahead, Nita, we're going to go ahead and start our first song. My excerpts today are from Isaiah 12, Psalms 104, Galatians 2 and 5, 1 John 3, Romans 8. Proverbs 30 and 2 Peter 1. Sing praises to the Lord, shout aloud and sing for joy. May our meditation be pleasing to you, O God, for we rejoice in the Lord again, we say rejoice. For it is no longer we who live, but it is Christ who lives in us. And the life we now live in the flesh, we live by faith in the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself for us. So do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in Christ Jesus. For in Christ Jesus, the only thing that counts is faith working through love. For we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For we are God's children, and faith is our victory. Join me as we sing. Oh, God. 
Surely God is our salvation. We will trust, and we will not be afraid, for our Lord God is our strength and our might. He has become our salvation. With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation, and we will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. For he has given us through these things his precious and very great promises, so that through them we may become participants of the divine nature. For every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Therefore, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. How I've proved him over and over. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Join me as we sing. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've created. We thank you for the opportunity to come and into this house and worship you, Lord, and not just here physically, but online. We're just so thankful for everyone who, who hears this word, Lord, and sees this service, Lord, that it would be beneficial to them. It would draw them nearer to you, Lord, and, and just uplift them. Lord, we continue to ask a blessing on our church. We just thank you so much for all the great things you've done, even during this time of pandemic, Lord, just keeping us safe and healthy and and just be with everyone who needs your healing touch today. We're so thankful to have uh, some people. We're thankful to have Linda back in here and worshiping with us. We're just thankful to uh, for the great news on people. Um, moving on to rehab and Dan coming home. We just continue to heal and strengthen Dan and June and so many others that need your healing touch in our congregation, Lord. We just continue to lift them up, be with Pastor Danny and Cindy as they travel, Lord. Continue to keep them safe and bring them home and give them a time of refreshing. We're thankful for Pastor 
Randy, and we're thankful for Sandy for being here. And Randy, bringing your word, Lord, be with him as he as he brings your word. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you for him and his service to you and his service here in, in this church in the past and, and going forward. And Lord, we just ask all these things the way your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Right, please join me in the responsive reading. That will be up on the it's in your insert in your bulletin and up on the on your screens. It comes from Matthew chapter 6, 25 through 34. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. What will you eat or what will you drink? Nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. You are not more value than they. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing, considering the lilies of the field, how they grow? They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Thank you. Um, now it's the time for our offering. I have one, uh, one other announcement I forgot. Next Sunday after church, we will be having our celebration picnic. Uh, the church will be buying all the food, all the drinks. We'll have the tents and the tables outside. You can bring some chairs if you want. We'll eat. Everything's in individually prepared, and you just pick it up and go sit down and eat. And, and we'll have a time of celebration that God's seen us through, and we're able to come back. It's been almost a month, and uh, or a little over a month now, I guess, since we've been coming back and, and worshiping. And so we're going to celebrate that next next week. So um, it's time for our offering. Um, as always, you know, you can uh, mail in. Um, obviously, they'll be for here. Those are here. There's one here. There's uh, the white box in the back and also a uh, another offering plate in the back that you can put that in. Uh, we're thankful to God for all he's given. Uh, for those that want to mail in, obviously, you can mail it into the church. Um, we also have the online giving. Uh, you can get to the link from our website. Uh, everything's secured. It's We didn't just make it up ourselves. We got people who know how to do online giving, and we just tied into their work. So, uh, you know, reputable companies and stuff like that. So um, so we're thankful for that. So, Jan, you can play your offertory, and then Ed will come in uh, uh, prayer and then lead us in doxology.
Thank you, Jan. That was lovely. Um, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this great little church. We thank you for keeping us healthy from the sickness that is out around the world. We thank you for the many blessings in our home and our family. We thank you for Pastor Randy and Sandy being here today. We thank you for every good and perfect gift that you've given us. Now, Father, we give back to you a portion of everything that you've given us and our tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name we pray. Please rise for our doxology. Okay, kids and adults alike, let's gather around, take a look at our children's story today. We've invited a special guest from last week back, so let's see what she has to say. This is a flashlight. If you're going someplace you know will be dark, you're going to want to bring one of these along. For instance, if you're going camping where there aren't any electric lights you can just switch on, you're going to need a flashlight to see when the sun goes down. You might use a flashlight to see things where the light can't reach, like underneath a table or a shelf. Has the power ever gone out in your house because of a storm? Flashlights are really helpful then. Did you know that God wants us to be lights? I know we don't actually glow like light bulbs, but he's talking about a different kind of light. Jesus told a parable in Matthew 15 through 16. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So you see, God wants us to use our words and actions to shine the light of Christ. If people see that you are a good and faithful person, they will wonder what makes you that way. And that's how you shine the light. You tell them that Jesus makes you that way. When you shine the light in darkness, what happens to the darkness? It disappears. The light takes over. Some people live in the darkness. They don't know how to have joy or goodness because they've been in the dark so long without Jesus Christ. But if you come near them and live life with them, you can act like this flashlight and shine light into their darkness. Don't ever be afraid because God always provides the light. Please welcome Pastor Randy as he brings us the message. Oh, thank you, David, for telling me I could take the mask off. It is so good to be back at Barnesville Baptist Church. Uh, I've used your name even in our church in Fenwick Island. I'll, I'll mistakenly say Barnesville Baptist Church sometime. <laughs> it's like being home, and it's, um, I always get nervous when I'm here. I'm not sure why, because it is like family. So uh, the message today will be very different than Pastor. Pastor Danny is a guy who's just bigger than life, and I love his preaching, and I watch him online, the, the live streaming, and uh, listen to the music. And Jan, thank you for that Power of the Cross. That was one of my favorite songs here. And it's just good to see family. We have two families now. We have our family at Barnesville and our family at Fenwick Island, and it's just, just great to be here. Um, my uh, preaching style is a little different than Danny's. Um, I always wanted to be able to, to preach loud like that. I can't. You know, I'm not a loud, <laughs> a loud person. And if uh, you can't hear me, please raise your hand or shout out to me or something. But I'll try to be clear. And uh, it, it's obvious to, to me, and it would be obvious to anyone else who comes in this building, that you worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the first prerequisite for having a church family that's in line with the Word of God, worshiping Christ. 
And I hear the songs, I hear the scripture that Nita uh, read, Victory in Christ. I, I think, Lee, did you do the responsive reading based on the lesson title, the message title? Yeah. The message title, I've had peace in the midst of the storm. And uh, it's just so very good to be here. I haven't seen Ralph and Judy for a long time. And I'm just very, just very glad to be here. Uh, the scripture I've chosen this morning is one of those that's so well known, you overlook it a lot and don't think about it a lot. And um, it's one of the scriptures that some people don't want to talk about. My wife, for instance. Because it begins with, um, let me see if we can read that, uh, Luke, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing. That's the part of the verse that really stuns my wife. Um, some people have a, an, a tendency, an inherent tendency to worry about things. So when they read this, they say, what? That doesn't include me for sure. I'm reminded of a, another person in this church who, um, uh, they retired and moved to West Virginia, and she did not like being taught from or taught about Proverbs 31, where the Proverbs 31 woman, the woman of valor, is raised up to such high um, expectations and high accomplishment, it makes us all look bad. And this is kind of the way it is about this verse for those who tend to worry a lot. But it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And that's the subject we're going to talk about a little bit this morning, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It just cannot be explained in logical reasoning, God's peace. So if you would, pray with me for just a moment, and we'll see what we can say about this scripture. Lord God, we know then in our lives that you have been faithful through every circumstance. Circumstances come into our lives that sometimes are hurtful, sometimes are joyful, and whatever it is, you are faithful, and you have given us going on. I heard even this morning there was a 5.1 earthquake in Sparta, North Carolina, and we're going to be driving right by that tomorrow. So, you know, there's always something that you may want to be concerned about. Um, but the, the point is we all experience these things at one level or another. Sometimes they're expected. Sometimes they're unexpected, but when they come, they break like giant storm waves break against the beach, and they're just devastating to us. I, I'm thinking about David when I first met him in 2001, what he was going through. And he's a good testimony for the peace of God, by the way. So with all of things going on, these things that are happening in the world and to our individual lives and our families, how is it possible for Paul to say to us, be anxious for nothing. Don't have extreme anxiety. Don't be unduly concerned about circumstances. And I would back off just a little bit and say it's very natural for human beings to be concerned about circumstances that may be harmful or hurtful to people they love. And it's natural to have some concern and even a little bit of worry about that. It would be foolish to say that that doesn't happen. So what is Paul getting at when he says, be anxious for nothing? One of the things, one of the ways I could express it, this is that Paul is saying to us that where God is, there is peace. Where God is present and God reigns and God speaks and God supports and God helps and God listens, there is peace. Paul said, pray, God is with us. And this morning I'd like for us to consider two kinds of peace. There's the peace with God, and there's the peace of God. And I think if we get a handle on those and maybe see them a little differently this morning and get that straight, we can come to terms with Paul's admonition not to be anxious about things. The peace of God. 
Essentially, the peace of God is our salvation. Our salvation is the peace of God. We think of Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 1. Paul wrote that having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are justified by faith, that means we, sinful people, have been declared righteous and innocent before a holy God. He can see us and interact with us because we receive the Lord's righteousness. That's being justified. That's being saved. That's our salvation. And with that, we have peace. Peace is our salvation. Salvation gives us this peace. And we need it because in the first three chapters of Romans, Paul goes to great at lengths to say that we have a, a, an enmity toward God before we're saved. There's some hostility there. We, we don't want to be accountable to anyone. And Paul says in that great verse that we all know, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that means God's wrath that abides on sinners already. And then in, in uh, 326, or 623 rather, he says, for the wages of sin is death, there's some consequence to the sin that we have. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the peace with God in my mind sort of summarizes the gospel of salvation. Faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. As Peter said to Cornelius the Roman in Acts 10, I don't know if you remember the story of Peter. He's in Joppa and sees this vision of a, a sheet coming down and all the animals on it. And the Lord is trying to teach him that if, if God calls something clean, don't call anything else unclean. He's trying to teach him that the Gentiles need the gospel of Christ as well as the Jews. So Peter goes to Cornelius' house, and he says this in Acts 10, 26. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Preaching peace, preaching repent and believe the gospel, preaching repent of sins, have faith in Christ, trust Jesus for salvation. That's the peace that comes that is our salvation. That is the peace with God. That means we have been reconciled to God. We're not at enmity with him anymore. We're not in our own strange human earthly family fighting against the commandments and standards, the moral standards and life standards God has for us. We're, we're reconciled to that. We understand it. We know it better. And the great thing about it is that the penalties and judgments for the sin, the basic nature to sin, plus all the other sins that you and I commit, the, the judgment for that has been paid completely. And we never, we never have to worry about that again. And that's good news for me. In fact, that's the best news ever put out in this world of ours. God saves sinners and gives them by their salvation peace with him. We have been reconciled to God. And not only that. We're, not only for, we're no longer strangers and foreigners to God, but we become adopted into his family. We become children of God. John 1.12, John writes this, But as many as received him confessed faith in the Lord Jesus, that he was God's son, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he was raised from the dead. For as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. That's pretty neat. Um, what was that song, I, I'm child of a king? That's exactly right. No matter who you are, no matter what you have, what you know, and you're a Christian, you become a child of a king. Paul said this again in Ephesians 2, 17, 17 and 19. He, Jesus, came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. He came and preached peace to the Gentiles. He preached, repent, 
and believe the gospel. He preached, believe God, have faith in God. He preached, I have come to seek and save those who are lost. He preached peace. That's what peace is. That's salvation, being reconciled to God. And I would say to you that this peace with God takes on the nuances of Old Testament shalom. You know, shalom, we hear that a lot. People say shalom, hello, goodbye. It means more than that. It's, it's I, I, I hope you're well. I hope you're well, your well-being. I hope your family's well. I hope you're healthy. Shalom. Imagine the peace Adam had with God before there was sin, before there was any sin. This would be the shalom peace with God. There was wholeness. Things were not fractured. There was completeness. There was health. There was soundness of mind and body. There was safety. There was prosperity. There was well-being. There was the joy of fellowship. There was abundance. That was the shalom peace that Adam would have experienced with God. Peace with God. Because of what Jesus has done for us in salvation, God's grace offers to us that same shalom of peace with God. No hostility, no anger, no battling. Ephesians 2.14 For he, Jesus, himself, is our peace. Jesus is our peace. And when we know that, and we know that he lives in us, and we know that his Holy Spirit works in us, then we should be able to pray and relieve what would normally otherwise be anxiety, undue anxiety and worry. In this peace, there's fellowship, there's joy in Christ, there's security in the love of Christ. There is the Holy Spirit promised for our lives. There's the promise of eternal life. That's the peace of God. And it's made possible by the Lord Jesus Christ. And the verse that you know I'm going to give you now says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that is peace. The Lord wants his followers to have that, to know that shalom peace here in this world and the peace with God in God's presence in the life to come, which never ends. It's amazing, people. It's amazing, and it's free to us. I would suggest to you this morning that no matter how educated or, know how, or no matter how experienced in life you are, without the peace of God, there is somewhere in your spirit a restlessness or a craving for something you can't quite get a handle on, that you can't quite answer, That's an itch you can't scratch, something there. Blaise Pascal, who was a 17th century mathematician, came up with the idea that he believed that somewhere in man's ancient history there was a happiness, there was a joy that somehow had been lost, and men constantly search to recover that. And writers since him have taken his concept and described that restlessness, that craving for something else as a God-shaped hole in our souls that nothing can fill besides God. We are created in God's image. We cannot be at ease until we conform to that image. And without the peace of God, we can't do that. Only God. And I would say, included in all this restlessness, especially with academia, all of science, all of philosophy, cannot answer in any rational way three of the most basic questions of our existence. Where did we come from? Where do we go after death? And what's the meaning of life? They can't answer those. You can't work that out on a slide rule or a computer. 
if you have peace with God, you can have rational, logical answers to those questions and find a contentment that has escaped you before there was peace. Peace with God. What about the peace of God? That's where we kind of get to this morning. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made to God, made to God and the peace of God which passes knowledge, understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is the peace that comes in the personal storms that the Lord allows to enter our lives. And the peace comes because and only because we have over time and practice developed an intimate relationship with God. Through Jesus. That's what prayer is. That's why we have access to him by the Holy Spirit. And just as an aside, if you know someone who struggles with this, tell them, don't expect the peace of God to come when you're living a life of stinking thinking and doing things against God's will that are immoral, that are lustful, that are selfish. Don't expect it there. It comes when you've developed an intimate relationship with the Lord. And this is nurtured daily by the things we say and the things we do and by our prayers. In fact, later on in this chapter, uh, the next couple of verses, Paul gives some guidance. And how do, you, how do you get away from worry and fretting and considering and being uh, 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 overrun, overwhelmed with bad news? He says this, Philippians 4, 8 and 9, Finally, brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me. These do, and the God of peace will be with you takes us back to Isaiah, Isaiah 61, verse uh, 16, I think. Uh, no, Isaiah 26, verse 3, you know this verse. Isaiah speaking to God, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. And that's what we're to do. We're, we're to trust God. What we believe in our hearts is reflected in what we do. The Holy Spirit does his work in us by developing and causing to grow what we learn in Galatians as the fruit of the Spirit. And I know the people in Barnesville Baptist Church can, can give me those nine fruits. I remember sitting over here, Leslie used to just volunteer them. He grows in our lives the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That becomes who we are. And when we have that solid, intimate relationship with Christ, nothing outside of us should bother us enough to make us anxious and unduly worried. That's, that's the point. If we... If we, take, if we exercise our faith and pray about everything, pray about the big things, I know you've prayed for, for where there's been death, you've prayed for peace, you've prayed for the Lord's comfort and grief and sickness and surgery, but pray about the little things. Pray for your children, pray for safety on the highway, pray for your pastor, that's not a little thing. Pray for your pastor, pray for your worship leader, pray for the leaders of the church, pray for your community. Pray for these things. And when you do that, you become saturated with God's goodness. And you're aware of it. And it, it won't slip your mind when that difficult time comes. His peace, which is beyond our ability to explain, comes to us and gives us, calms our hearts and, and brings us a contentment and we become aware that God 
through Jesus and the Holy Spirit loves us. That's critical, people. God is in control. He will work every situation out for his good, for our for his glory and for our good. Now, we don't always see that. There are things going on now that we would like to stop or we would like to change. If God took advice for us, I'd say, you can say, Lord, I know the thing that Atif is struggling. If if I were you, I would no. We can't do that. We cannot suggest to God how he is to work. We have very infinite minds. No matter how intelligent you are or how much training you have, compared to God, our minds are just small little things. And I think the very best illustration for what we see in life and what God sees is thinking about a beautiful tapestry that God is making. We only see it from the back, this little bit. And you know what we see in the back of a tapestry? Loose strings, colored strings, knots. It doesn't seem to go anywhere. There's no picture to it. There's no goodness to it. But God is working on the front of the tapestry, and he sees the beautiful picture. And I would say to you, as we trust in the Lord, we trust God to bring peace to whatever storm we're going through, even though we, though we don't see the end of it, we don't see it resolved, we can know that whatever is happening, he is creating something beautiful. And we will see it and understand it eventually. Sometimes we're like disciples. In our struggles, we tend to forget who Jesus is. I know he's our savior. We know that. We know we have the indwelling spirit. But sometimes we, we shut them off in a room somewhere so it gives us a place to worry and be anxious. It reminds me of the story, the wonderful account in both Mark and Luke. You remember of Jesus getting into the boats with the disciples. He said, let's go to the other side. And while they're out there, a great storm comes up. And in written, uh, we read in Mark chapter 4, verses 37 to 40, they're in the boat, the storm is there, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he, Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. The disciples says, Who, what kind of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? We have to trust God. And when you remember, we don't have to ask him if he cares. First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. And that should be easy when we remind ourselves that he is with us. He is the omnipotent God. He is the creator and sustainer of everything in the universe. And he's with us. He lives in us. And he promised never to leave us. When you lie there in that bed with cancer, you're not by yourself. God is with you. And God loves you. And don't ever forget that. When you have problems with children or grandchildren, when there's conflict somewhere, you don't have to say, I have to work this out or it's up to me. You don't have to. You pray about it. Let God help you with it. Sometimes when misfortune happens in our lives, sometimes we cause it ourselves by bad judgments. Sometimes others do things that hurt us or some tragedy surprises us. And we forget who the Lord is. And we don't think about Paul's admonition reminding us to pray. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. He will guard your heart and mind. He will put garrison around your hearts and mind. Protect your heart and mind from the doubt and fear and worthy, worry and anxiety that would try to invade your thinking when things look bleak, when things are not going well. 
Remember who is your Lord. Rest a while. Listen for his voice, that still small voice in your spirit. Peace. Be still. There's a, a good friend of ours at our Fenwick Island Church. Uh, she's a wonderful Christian, a good example of this intimate relationship with Christ. She went to a meeting, uh, I think it was a building committee meeting at church one afternoon not long ago, around 4 o'clock, I think. And Sandy and I weren't in the meeting, but we arrived at church just as the meeting was bro- breaking up to drop off something, I think. And she was coming out, and we spoke to her. She was going home, or her husband had been mowing the neighbor's lawn when she left. And uh, so we said goodbye, and she went home. Within 10 minutes, she called back to the church. She went home and found her husband dead on the floor in their living room. One of those very hot days, for some reason, he had died, whether it was heat exhaustion or heart attack or something. But Sherry, this friend of ours, she was so shocked, I guess, by this and hurt. It was such a surprise. No one expected her husband to die. But her testimony is this. God's grace came to me that moment and I felt a peace even though I was suffering in my heart, losing my husband so suddenly. I felt a peace that only God could bring to me. And her testimony was that God's grace comes in different ways through the Holy Spirit. God's grace comes through Christian friends who come and call and send cards and and know that she knows they're praying for her. But that's what I'm talking about. Even in the most tragic circumstance, the peace of God is possible. In 1974, an F5 tornado ripped through Xenia, Ohio. We, Sandy worked in Xenia. We lived next door in Dayton. An F5 tornado is, on, I think, on the top of that tornado scale. The wind speeds in an F5 range from 260 to 318 miles an hour. This tornado, a half a mile wide, came out of the southwest and went right across our town. The damage was indescribable. You cannot imagine the damage that this thing did. Hundreds and hundreds of homes were destroyed. Businesses were destroyed. Churches were destroyed. Stores were destroyed. Schools were destroyed. I think two or three elementary schools. The high school was demolished. In fact, this storm came after school had ended for students, so fortunately no one was in these buildings. But one account was that the, a school bus was picked up and thrown onto the stage in the auditorium at the high school. It was completely devastating. I mean, this, this was tragedy. Steve Adams, who was a uh, worship leader in one of the churches in Xenia, a church which, by the way, was destroyed. Only 34 lives were lost in that tornado, by the way, which is a miraculous thing in itself. Steve Adams was in his car when he saw the storm coming. And he knew it was not good. And he got out of his car and ran into a furniture store and hid under something heavy and waited. And the storm passed. His car was demolished, destroyed. I think uh, Sandy said glass was embedded in the Bible he had in the trunk of the car. The store was damaged where he was staying, but he was safe. And after that storm, his experience in that storm He wrote the Christian cantata, Peace in the Midst of a Storm. And he tried to put into words and music the peace that the presence of the Lord brings to the most distressing and most dangerous circumstances. It's a great cantata. The theme song, it's a great song, Peace in the Midst of a Storm. Maybe you know that, Nita. But the words of the chorus of that song go like this. There is peace in the midst of the storm. There is an anchor. There is a rock to build my faith upon. Jesus Christ is my vessel, so I fear no alarm. He gives me peace in the midst 
of the storm. Any time, anywhere, any circumstance, it's possible. A conclusion that we can reach from what I've said today about this piece, if you don't remember anything else, put this away in your, in your memory. This description of peace, or talking about peace, I got it from a Jews for Jesus article. They understand shalom. And it says this, a conclusion we can reach. Peace transcends the situation and flaws of our lives, of our own personal lives, because it doesn't come from us, it comes from God. Peace transcends, it's, it's beyond, it's greater than, it's, it's incomprehensible to us as finite humans. It transcends our situation. Because we don't generate it. We don't create it in our lives. Peace comes from God. And the God of peace extends his grace to us so that we may have peace with God through salvation. And then he brings to us the peace of God as the comfort and shelter and calmness in the storms of life. And it isn't just I saying this. It isn't just Paul saying this. It isn't just Isaiah saying this. This is Jesus saying this. John 14, 27. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. And then he says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That sounds a lot like don't be anxious for anything, but by in every situation, through prayer and supplication, let your request be made, made known to God. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, you are an awesome God, creator, savior, you love your people. You come into our lives. You give us joy and you give us peace. And you allow us to live this life as best we can in a way that honors you. So I pray this morning for myself and every person in the sanctuary, every person that may hear or watch this, this message on, uh, through the live streaming, that you would open up your shalom peace to us. And grant us peace, your peace, in our lives. I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And I would say very quickly, if there's someone here, I, I know most of you, and I know most of you confess faith in Christ. Maybe someone watching on live, live stream may not know Christ. But I would say to you that um, if you need to finally put to rest that careless, that that uh, restlessness, that desire for something else that, uh, that's in your spirit, something to fill that God-shaped hole. You can do it now, this morning. You can just pray about it. And it's not difficult. Jesus said in Mark chapter 1, repent and believe the gospel. That's essentially what you do. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's our salvation. Salvation is our peace. Our peace is salvation. Thank you very much. God bless you. David. Thank you, Pastor Randy. Um, and I know Danny would want me to say that, you know, he's always available. Um, certainly you can reach out to him um, through email or by phone um, if you need to talk to him. Um, he's always available even, even when he's out on vacation. He'll be back next day or two, and, and certainly he'll, he can always get back to you. I think 
I didn't check, but I do believe there's still water in the baptistry uh, from last week, and and uh, you know maybe next week. We, I know he was working on potentially scheduling uh, some more, and so certainly reach out to him about that. If you need anything, um, certainly reach out to the church. Once again, thank you, Randy um, and Sandy, for coming today and being with us, and Randy bringing the word, and we're just so thankful, and uh, hope everyone has a wonderful day in this closing prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you again for this day. and We just thank you for the many gifts you give us. With the, one of the greatest gifts, your son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and our sins. And we thank you for the peace that you give us through him that passes all understanding. But the world can't give that. Things can't give it to you. Stuff can't give it to you. Um, there's nothing in the world that can give you that peace that God, only God can give you. And when you accept Jesus and, and have that peace, it is such an amazing feeling. And, and it does pass all understanding. You know you don't deserve it, but God gives it to you freely, just knowing, knowing his son Jesus. Lord, we just continue to ask a blessing on your church family here in Barnesville. We ask a blessing on the church in Fenwick Island that Randy and Sandy attend. Lord, we just lift up all our churches and all the people, Lord, that know you, just just strengthen and empower them uh, to be able to shine a light in this world that needs to see your glory and your grace and experience your peace. And we just ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.